If you are just getting started in the biotech industry or you are not getting interview calls, then this video is for you. Hey everybody, this is Shekhar Suman from Biotechnica and today we are going to talk about a very important topic and that is how to get more interview calls from the biotech industry. Now, this topic has been dealt in multiple different ways in my previous video also. Some points can be repetitive, but I promise you there are going to be some eye-opening pointers for you, which will help you get more and more interview calls. Now, starting with, have you observed that some people get more calls for interview than probably you or someone else? Well, I have personally seen that. Now that we are living in the AI era, this is happening more times, okay? So there is a reason that is happening and that is exactly what I am going to tell you. Now, first thing, you may not be very talented, but if you are getting a lot of interview calls, but then only you have a choice to choose the best company, right? And that is what I want. I want you to choose the best company, right? So we did some research and we have observed a trend in the last 4-5 years, but the trend is more prominent now given that now we are into the generative AI era. So more and more HRs are using generative AI as well as AI based softwares to filter the CVs. Now having said that we have to be better equipped now and we should not just use chat GPT to design our CV or cover letter but we have to optimize our CV for the AI era. Now to start with if you want to get more interview calls then you have to think like an AI. Now generally what the AI does is you will mention some skills, you will mention some experience and you will mention some location. Any of these three combinations it will correlate and when the HR is saying that I am looking for molecular biology postgraduate with two years of experience in Hyderabad it will show the first five or top ten based on if you have mentioned these keywords in your CV. So actually the HR never saw your CV also. That's the kind of era we are going to get into now. So you have to now design your CV as per this. How exactly a HR will look for my CV? He'll go into that search bar and now just like Google, we have search bar in, in our AI tools. So we can go and write, I'm looking for a list of candidates who have bioinformatics experience of minimum two years in Bangalore who can join immediately and it can flash. So if you have mentioned any of these or all of these pointers, then only you get the job. So that's the first trick I can give you today. Start thinking like an AI, start thinking like how a HR will shortlist using a search bar. You know, the HR of 2020s were using Excel sheet, right? But the HR of 2024, 2025 is using AI. So you have to now optimize your CV for AI. Now, the next point which I would like to give you is, yes, there are still 60% HRs who are still using the previous method, which is the Excel sheet method and the reading the and sifting through the resume. So you should have a strong header where you are mentioning what exactly you are are targeting in your career like molecular biologist with three years of experience ready to create uh, ready to work in an industry something which is very catchy highlights your skills and at the same time showcases what you want to become or what you want to do right so that kind of a header and never forget to include your LinkedIn profile and make sure your LinkedIn profile is properly formatted next thing we have is your contact details should be proper. Many a times you do a mistake and that is how you're not getting called. This is the most silly reason people don't get interview calls is because their contact details, their email ID, especially the phone number was wrong or they were unavailable to pick that call, right? So you have to make sure that once you've applied, you are available over the call so that if somebody is calling, you can immediately pick the calls, right? So these are the things you should know. Now, the next aspect which I would like to highlight is never ever forget to highlight your educational background if you have high CGPA. See, CGPAs don't matter actually, but if you have it, flaunt it. If you don't have it, no problem. So what really happens is if you have a CGPA, flaunt it. If you have a lower CGPA, flaunt your skills, right? So you have to be ready because the AI or of course uh, through the Excel sheet also, how the HR is going to shift is he's going to create filters or the AI is going to create a filter and find out who is having this skill plus this location plus this experience. Combines gives the output to the HR, right? So that is where you have to make sure that your resume header as well as career objective is properly formatted. So let me give you an example if it is something like this. Recent biotechnology graduate passionate about molecular biology and genetic engineering eager to apply laboratory skills and bioinformatics skills to contribute to innovative research and development in healthcare or biotech. 
this kind of catchy career objective should be there right so first i told you the mission which you are up to and then you have to have the career objective now followed by that i told you also about highlighting your gpa next is coming to the technical skills because that is where it, it is very important so with every technical skill probably you could create a table and show how many years of experience you have so let's say that you have uh, experience of bioinformatics tools like blasta pymol python matlab so mention how many years of experience you have then laboratory techniques pcr elisa hplc xn blot spectroscopy whatever types of spectroscopy mention how many years of experience you have right and then the soft skills like collaboration ma time management adaptability of course you can't put a you know ear to this but yeah you can mention that worked in a project where you learned all of this so you know when you do this your chances of getting into we calls is higher and especially you should showcase your technical skill in your cover letter not just your cv because cover letter also is read and hrs pay a lot of attention to the cover letter if the cover letter is not proper this straight away assume that you don't have communication skills so you have to make sure that the cover letter is nicely written but also you should know that if you use chat gpt to write the cover letter they already know that you have faked it so don't use chat gpt completely to write your cover letter instead you write on your own ask chat gpt to fix the grammar and then you send it to the hr okay now another aspect which i have seen many of you forget to mention the relevant project experience you have like if the job is about bioinformatics so you should highlight the bi bioinformatics projects which you have done if the job is about antibacterial resistance then you talk about antibacterial resistance so you know whatever projects you have done you have to highlight if it is similar if it is matching then the, your chances of getting shortlisted is high your chances of getting selected is also very very high now another thing which i have seen which uh, students miss out or many job seekers miss out is mentioning or highlighting your awards and achievement so if you forget to mention because others would not have that right so your cv has to stand out so when you mention that you received an award whether it is in college whether you you somewhere whenever there is an opportunity win award and do highlight it on your cv because that gives a very good impression on to the hr that this person is a multi dimensional person he is not just you know studious and into academics he has got other he has done other played other roles also because they everybody wants a all rounder in their company right so that is why your chances of getting selected is high if you have presented poster presented papers spoken in a conference or won some awards achievements all of this has to be there now moving forward one biggest turn off every hr including me also has is if there are spelling mistakes in your cv spelling mistakes in your cover letter okay many students they did bsc botany they are writing it botany so if the spelling is wrong how should i hire you if you don't pay attention to such thing instead of microbiology you have you have written microbiology so this kind of small spelling mistake reflects that you are not a good finisher you are not someone who is organized so make sure that there is no typos you can use app called grammarly which will help you find out if there is any mistake in your cv or cover letter and then you should send it so this is very important another thing which i think should also mention is you have to upload your cv at the right place for example biotechnica is networked right now with 349 different biotech companies okay india abroad europe everywhere so if you are uploading your cv to biotechnica's talent pool the link is given in the description you will get hr calls faster because biotechnica has built a ai tool which we are giving free of cost to the hrs so hrs can directly use the tool and find you and they will call you if you are shortlisted so what are you waiting for go and upload your cv to the biotechnica talent pool and get interview calls faster so these are the pointers which i wanted to highlight i am sure i must have missed something or which you might have discovered so feel free to comment below if you have any questions any feedback any other points which you would like to add so that we all come together and create a community which helps each other thank you so much for watching this video see you soon in the next one till then keep shining take care bye bye